What's up everybody, this is Eric Creed Harry. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the 16 foot bathroom dome that was built just before this slab. And you can see it there on the right. This concrete slab took about 11 yards of concrete to pour. And you can see around the perimeter of the slab is much deeper than in the middle. So here you can see there's a 16 foot diameter air form that is being stretched out to be mounted to that slab. And angle iron is used to mount the air forms to the slab. And then on the inside, usually sand is placed around any gaps to prevent any air from leaking out. And you can see here on the left, there's a bouncy house blower. And that's all we're using to inflate this air form. It's very low tech. The air form is great because this is a reusable air form. So you could build a hundred of these structures if you want it with that one air form. Or you can make yourself a Tyvek air form for 200 bucks. And you can build 16 foot or 20 foot with one roll of Tyvek. And you can make your own air form, 200 bucks it would cost you. And um, you could build this. The big difference is you would not be standing on top of the Tyvek air form. It's a low pressure system and you have to build up your concrete slowly so that you can develop the strength before you can even get close to standing on it. But once you're done with like the first six feet of vertical wall, then you're able to lean a ladder against that if you have to so that you can continue spraying this round structure. You can see here the air forms inflated. We have the basalt mesh wrapped around the bottom. There's also basalt rebar going over and basalt roving or basalt rope is what we were using. For the reinforcing layers and tie wraps are used and this part of the reasoning for that is to avoid creating a faraday cage you don't want to live in a faraday cage it's not good energetically for the human body to be inside of metal structures or to have structures with too much metal in them so the idea behind these domes will be no metal in the actual structure so that's why this is all basalt. There's no iron rebar involved in this. Also by using basalt, you can use a much thinner concrete layer or stucco coating rather than if you had iron rebar because you have to account for trying to embed the iron rebar to avoid it from getting wet and rusting. You don't have any of those problems using basalt. As you can see here, there's three different basalt products being used from the mesh to the rebar to this rope or roving. So garbage pails used to keep an area open for a skylight. So you can use anything round. This garbage pail was available. It was the perfect diameter. So it was used. And you can see here the guys started spraying with the stucco sprayer. So this is a stucco mix, specially blended to the requirements that we had. And so it's a very easy and quick process of spraying this, especially if you have a good routine. 
and the ideal situation is to have someone loading your hopper for you and later on we'll have that but since the wheelbarrow was so close and we were just starting it's another really good method to use so see the wheelbarrow should be following him so he doesn't have to walk all the way to the wheelbarrow but it takes a minute to uh, get into the groove of things when you're doing this kind of work and also a really important thing to note is this is everybody's first time doing this no one's ever built a dome using this process before and you can see here you have somebody loading the hopper now he can just spray and he's got the next load of stucco cement mix ready to be dumped into that hopper So don't be thrown off by the bucket truck. My buddy Dan got this bucket truck just to make this process a little easier. But this can all still be done with ladders. And in the next video, you'll see a new ladder system that was uh, built in order to be able to spray these domes. See, it's a ladder like that. That you just saw go up only difference is it goes to a mount at the center of the dome and um, i'll be showing that in the next video so it's very important to get the top of the dome sprayed because that seals off that's like your keystone you know a dome is a 360 arch and an arch has the keystone that's the stone that goes at the center of the top of the arch that locks everything into place. It takes all the weight and compression. That center stone along with the vertical walls going down. So it's very important to get the entire thing sprayed correctly. If you have, for example, a skylight at the top, you want to have that area reinforced where the opening is going to be. So there's actually extra rebar in that area around the skylight. Also really important to get all those holes filled up. Because of the size mesh this is, the outer part gets wet and the cement sticks to the outer part faster than it fills the center. And that really just comes from having enough air pressure as well to really be able to blast that material in. But as you saw, going behind the person who's stucco spraying with a trowel is a great option because you can use that trowel to push the material in. And so it makes for better contact of the cement. And ideally, once all the rebar has been completely covered, you have enough concrete on your structure. These are thin shelled concrete structures. And really the maximum thickness for, you know, 30, even a 40 footer would be about three inches thick. Now what's gonna go on top of this is the insulative layer. So that could be aircrete bricks that get mortared on I'm not a huge fan of that. I like the Epic Cement Mix. It has expanded polystyrofoam and paper mixed with the water. And so all of that gets sprayed on or trialed on. And you can build that up to the thickness you need. And in this case, the thickness would be that foundation. The slab going all the way out is the thickness of the insulation layer that's going to end up going onto that. And even that insulation layer being light still has strength to it. In fact, some of the mixes that I was using for that, for the insulation layer, had about 500 PSI compression strength.
So ideally you want to be done spraying for at least an hour or two before wetting. You don't want it to actually rain or <laughs> wet or, or spray water on it as you're spraying. Look at that rainbow. Happy birthday to Dan. Yay, happy birthday. With great beards comes great responsibilities.